All right. Well, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Graham Thomas, and we certainly appreciate that you're here today. We're going to dive into your local Bedford County numbers. Um, I don't know if any of you were able to join us about an hour ago. Christy and I kicked off this entire week with a statewide update, but essentially what we are doing this week is we're doing 91 of these. So every single county that we serve, we have invited all of our stakeholders to come and learn a little bit more about our Tennessee Achieves and Tennessee Promise data um, in your local community. So when we launched Tennessee Promise back in 2015, it was written into the legislation that our county mayors or county executives appoint a group of people that help provide us um, some guidance, feedback, a layer of accountability as we serve students across Tennessee. Um, a couple of years ago, Chrissy and I went and visited all 90 counties that we serve and we figured while the pandemic is still providing so much uncertainty in the world right now, that this year we would go ahead and provide these virtually. So this is our effort to keep you updated on the work that we're doing. We also decided that while we were pulling together our advisory council and Zoom gives us pretty much an unlimited capability to expand this, that we might as well invite everyone that would be potentially interested. So we have um, invited all of our mentors, all of our business partners, K-12 partners, college partners. If you have supported our work or been involved with our work in any way over the last seven or eight years, um, we sent this out. So we're excited that you all could be here with us today. So you notice your cameras are on, your mics are on. Um, I'm gonna go through this presentation. You can ask me questions while we're going. Uh, you can save your questions till the end. We can have a conversation around all this, but wanna make sure that before we leave here today, we've got all of your questions answered. So as I'm going through this, feel free to interrupt me or again, save your questions to me and whatever works for you works for me. So let's dive in here. Uh, just a real quick kind of first couple slides here, reminder of who we are. We are the 501c3 nonprofit that operates Tennessee Promise in 90 of the state's 95 counties. Um, since our launch in Knox County in 2008, we've worked with more than 440,000 students and 71,000 volunteer mentors. We work with over 600 Tennessee high schools and 67 post-secondary institutions across the state of Tennessee. Uh, our core components, you can see here on this slide, that have really been with us since this program launched as Knox Achieves back in 2008. Um, the first three of which have been with us really since this was just an idea on a whiteboard. So. Tennessee Promise now takes care of that last dollar scholarship piece, eliminating the financial barrier to attend one of our 13 community colleges, our 27 Tennessee Colleges of Applied Technology, and about 27 four-year universities that offer associate degree programs. Each student that applies for the Tennessee Promise Scholarship in one of these 90 counties is paired with a volunteer mentor. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. And then our students give back eight hours of community service every semester that they receive the scholarship. So those three things have really been with us for 13 years now. Last dollar scholarship with mentor support, we figured 13 years ago, donors were paying for the scholarship, volunteers were making sure students were successful, that our students needed to also continue that tradition of giving back in their communities. We've added a few things over the last few years, one of which is we now offer two summer programs. One is our summer bridge program. We offer that this summer at all 13 community colleges, actually at 15 sites across the state. I will tell you that we had an 89% success rate with that program this year. So summer bridge program is a through three week kind of a boot camp where students come and do an hour every day of reading, writing and math to see if we can improve their test scores. Uh, students that are not testing into college level coursework see if we can get them into college level coursework by the end of that three weeks. And like I said, 89% of the students either tested into college level coursework or improved their test scores. So the program we're really proud of. The second is our Summer Institute, which is um, a program where we focus on the urban core of Memphis. Um, it is a program this year. We had 29 students participate, 100% of them. Um, identified as a minority population, about 85% of them came from a low income household. We had a 100% success rate with that program this year, uh, which is just unheard of, surprised us, but those students are actually enrolled in credit bearing classes. So um, Bridge is three weeks, Institute this year was six weeks, 
And students over the course of those six weeks actually complete all nine hours of their learning support classes and then gain nine additional hours of college credit. So 18 hours worth of, worth of work, students that would be starting a full semester behind or starting a full semester ahead. Um, and then our, one of our newest programs is our um, complete program, which we now have a staff of about 17 or 18 um, staff members that are coaching our most at-risk students through college. So they kind of pick up where, for those of you that are mentors, kind of where your work ends, our coaches pick up, um, and they are coaching our most at-risk population through um, their college careers, which in Tennessee, our most at-risk are our low-income students. A little bit more about our reach, mentioned earlier that we're in 90 counties, 74 of those are rural, 35 of them are at risk or distressed, according to the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development and working in 601 high schools. See our post-secondary partners, 67 colleges, so it's 13 community colleges, our 27 Tennessee colleges of applied technology, and then 27 four-year universities. And then you can kind of see a shakedown of where our students are attending. So. 79% of them are enrolled at one of our 13 community colleges, 11% at one of our TCATs, and then 10% are using that four-year option. Um, typically, when we are in communities and counties like Bedford and Shelbyville where there is a TCAT, those TCAT numbers shift a little bit, um, and it's certainly a place we would like to see our students continue to go because the success rate there uh, really is just through the roof. Um, but no big surprise probably that most of them are at the community college. Here is another kind of statewide snapshot um, of what our program looks like every single year. So every single year we get more than 60,000 students to apply. Um, two years ago was our highest at a little over 64,000 students applying. Um, what that looks like for us annually is 89% of the high school seniors in the state go through our program. That doesn't include those five counties where the Ayers Foundation works. So more than 90% of students are applying for Tennessee Promise, but 89% of them um, go through the Tennessee Achieves program. We help them with FAFSA completion. They get a mentor. Um, we're touching those seniors in some way. 78% of all first-time freshmen at the community colleges go through our program. Um, and 86% of Tennessee community college graduates are Tennessee Achieves students. You're going to see some data here um, later in this presentation that kind of where the graduation rate started when we started this program, and you're going to see our graduation date or data, and then you're going to see kind of the statewide data. You're going to see it's really close um, because so many students at the community college level now are going through our program that as our students are successful, the community college student population as a whole is successful. So um, the scope really when we started 13 years ago with 500 students in Knox County. When you look at the scope now, it's honestly, for those of us that have been here that long, um, mind-blowing that we're working with this many students um, every single year. When you add the high school seniors to the currently enrolled college students, it's about 90,000 students that we're working with annually. You see that over half of our students are eligible for um, federal financial aid. So that means they're coming from low-income households. Um, if you qualify for a federal Pell Grant, it means your income, it's a long, complicated formula, but it means you're coming from a lower income household. 40% of the students that we're working with are the first in their family to go to college. Um, always kind of make a note here, that is a self-reported number. Um, kind of tricky to, to track that one down. I don't know that there's a really strong definition of what first generation looks like across the state or even across the country. Um, the number always surprises me a little bit, seeing as how only about 40% of adults in Tennessee have a degree, that only 40% of our students would be the first in their family to go, but that's what they're self-reporting. Um, and then you see that 51% of our students are majoring in um, health science or STEM-related fields. So they are going into those career paths um, that we know that we need here in Tennessee, where there are open positions um, where they can go get a credential and they're going to be able to find a job. $32 million is what Tennessee Promise pays annually. So that's the state commitment for those last dollar scholarship funds for students to attend college. And then Tennessee Achieves operates on a pretty lean two and a half million dollar um, operating budget. Um, most of that is privately funded. We get a little bit of state funding for our coaching model. Um, but the vast majority of that is privately fundraised from donors and foundations uh, throughout Tennessee. 
So let's take a look at some of your local data here in Bedford County. So first couple of benchmarks. The first one is the FAFSA filing rate. You guys have fallen a little bit behind um, the statewide benchmark here, 86%. Uh, we saw a, a small drop in our FAFSA filing rate from the previous year, which was about 90. Um, you know, COVID, you're gonna see some COVID impact slides here in a few minutes. You know, COVID has negatively affected most of our benchmarks um, along the way, but Certainly hoping that we're going to be able to get back into high schools this year, get in front of students, and that we're going to, one, get that statewide FAFSA rate back up towards 90 um, and get Bedford back up to the state average here. Um, want to make sure that your students are knocking out that paperwork so that this opportunity um, remains possible for them. Another number that we are really proud of is our community service numbers here. You see almost 3.4 million hours of community service completed by Tennessee Promise students. Um, Randy Boyd, who is our board chairman, says that makes Tennessee the largest community service um, organization in the state. No one has stepped up and said, that's not true. We don't know if it's true or not. We're gonna run with it until someone tells us otherwise. And you see that about 25,000 of those hours have been um, completed locally in Bedford County. So. Hopefully there at the TCAT, you're seeing some, maybe some students give back in your local schools um, at some of your local nonprofits, about 25,000 hours from Bedford County students there. So next, let's take a little look at your student progress, the most important piece of all of this, right? So locally, uh, this is from the class of 2019 here, um, the first three rows and the last one is from the class of 2017, but 606 Tennessee Promise applicants 163 of which went through the program and enrolled in college using Tennessee Promise. You can see your first year retention rate, two thirds of them are starting and then coming back for their sophomore year, uh, which is right online with the statewide average. And then the really exciting news in Bedford County is that you're outpacing the statewide graduation rate by a pretty nice clip. Um, we don't have this broken out into by county, by community college, four-year university, or TCAT, but my guess is um, having TCAT Shelbyville in your backyard there um, is probably boosting this number. Um, our TCAT graduation rate is about 75% um, compared to lower 30s with the community college. So probably what we're seeing there is a higher percentage of your students going to TCAT. Uh, but you are out, outpacing the statewide um, graduation rate by a pretty good mark. So that is some really exciting information, really good news to share um, with our student data here in Bedford County. Here you can kind of see some of those statewide outcomes. So first year retention for our students, you just saw this statewide 67%. That is compared to 53% of our first time full-time freshmen at community colleges. So our students statewide um, out achieving the general population by a pretty good mark. And then Tennessee achieves students at any college with a 74% first year retention. So those are students that have gone through our program and enrolled in college anywhere um, outside the scope of Tennessee Promise. You know, that could be UT, MTSU, um, but students that were given a mentor, that we helped file FAFSA, that we helped through the college going process. And then you see our six year graduation data there. 51% of our students, that started a community college six years later have graduated from somewhere. So what that means is those are your students that graduated in two or three years at a community college. Those are also your students that maybe go to Motlow State for a year, don't graduate, get their basics out of the way, transfer to MTSU or UT or wherever it may be, um, the new UT Southern Campus, the old Martin Methodist there. Um, they, they're going somewhere and they're graduating um, compared to what you see our first time full-time freshman at community college is at 35%. So it's really hard to celebrate 51%. Um, but when you benchmark where we were before Promise and where we are now, um, we're making progress. To give you an idea, when we launched Knox Achieves in 2008, the three-year community college graduation rate was about 14%. Um, our three-year graduation rate is 35%. At Tennessee Achieves. So we're making significant progress. Hard to celebrate 51, um, but moving in the right direction. A couple of things that we're doing to impact um, student outcomes here. 
One, the summer programs, we already talked about those, but students that complete those summer programs, it increases their retention by about 34%. We talked about our complete coaching model earlier, which also increases first year retention uh, by 23%. Um, those were our students that were actually our lowest achieving, had our lowest retention rates, our lowest graduation rates, and they've actually caught up and passed now the general Tennessee achieves population. Um, so a program that we're really excited about. And then we've got a new program called Knox Promise that is funded by a private donation for any student in Knox County, is given a complete coach regardless of their income. And we have what we call completion grants. Some people would call that emergency grant funding. Um, but for our lower income students there, we're able to pay for their books, we're able to pay for transportation, so gas, um, we can pay for Ubers, we figure out a way to keep them like where they can go from their house to a campus. Uh, we pay for food for students with food insecurities, we uh, can pay utility bills, we pay transitional housing for some students. So it's a program that is showing a lot of promise and something that we're working to secure some funding to ultimately, hopefully, take that program statewide. So, so far all good news. And then we get to this slide. Um, and I, I mentioned earlier, you're gonna see a slide or two in here that show the negative impacts of COVID. And uh, here is the one. Um, from 2014 to 2015, you can see that the college going rate in Tennessee increased by 4.6%, which was more than the previous seven years combined. That was the first year of Tennessee Promise. We hoped we could increase the college going rate by 3%. We got it all the way up to 4.6. Um, steadily saw some increases for a few years, started to level out a little bit. Then COVID hit last year, and you can see all the good work that has taken place over the last five or six years um, was erased. Now, in Bedford County, you can see that your drop was not so severe, um, but you started at a place that's quite a bit lower than the state average. So something we certainly want to dig in on in Bedford County is making sure that students are applying for Promise. We saw your FAFSA number was a little bit lower. We want to get those FAFSA numbers up and we want to make sure that your students are going somewhere. So bright side of the slide locally is your drop was not as drastic, but you were starting from a lower space. So want to continue to make sure that students are aware of and taking advantage of this opportunity. So what can you guys do to help us out here? So the first thing is we need 9,000 mentors across the state. For those of you that have not been a mentor before or need a little reminder about what the mentoring role looks like, it's all laid out here for you. So 9,000 statewide that we're really asking to play three roles for our students. First is you're that task manager, making sure students are uh, completing their financial aid paperwork, applying to the college, turning in those community service hours, they're making progress towards college while remaining eligible for Tennessee Promise. Second thing we say is that you're that trusted resource, the person they can reach out to when they have a question, when they don't know the next step in the process, and they get a letter from financial aid and they don't know what it means. Um, they've got someone they can reach out to and get those answers and eliminate those barriers. And then finally, the piece of this that I've been saying is the most important for the last 13 years, as we continue to kind of navigate these uncertain times, I think the encouragement piece is more important than ever. Just that, yeah, it, you know, college, one, college is hard, right? Anyone who's ever been to college before has struggled, whether it's, uh, for me, example, the math class, or for some of our students, it's writing papers. For some of them, it's juggling that full-time workload with the full-time class load. And just that, yeah, it gets hard. And anyone who's ever been to college before has had a hard time. And that's normal, but hey, you can do this. And, you know, times right now are weird. They're online, they're in person, uh, still navigating a pandemic. Um, and just that you're going to go through this together. So mentoring next year looks a little different than it looked this year. And that this year looked a little different than it looked the previous 12 years. So if you mentored with us this year, you know that we invested in an online platform called Tennessee Achieves Connect that allows you to have virtual meetings with your students. You can always still call them, text them, and email. The Connect platform also provided you with a level um, of tracking that we've never had before. We were able to update in real time when students were applying, when they were enrolling full time. And so you know everything about your students that we know in terms of where they are in the college going process. That's going to hang with us in 2022. 
Every single mentor will still have access to connect. It was a pretty big investment on our part. So it's not going anywhere. Um, what we're going to do next year that will look a little bit different. If you mentored with us previous to this year, you remember those big crowded meetings in the high school. We're not going to go back to that, um, but we are going to offer you some in-person opportunities. We uh, surveyed our current mentors and we heard about two thirds of our current mentors told us they want an in-person option. So we're going to do two things there. One, we are scheduling what we call um, open houses um, that we're going to host on college campuses across the state where you can invite your students to come sit down and meet with you. There will be a Tennessee Chief Staff person there to answer questions, no formal presentation or anything like that. Um, there will also be college faculty and staff there to help students apply, to help ensure they've submitted all their financial aid paperwork, kind of complete those admissions files, try to make it a one-stop shop. And then we're also going to encourage students and mentors to meet on their own. Um, this is something that we've never really done before, but we know it's been happening. Randy Boyd, who is our board chairman, takes his students to pizza every year. We had a mentor this past year who essentially ran her own summer bridge program in her front yard for one of her students. They came, they sat outside every day, so it was safe. Um, and she got the student prepared to take that placement test so that the student wouldn't have to take um, those learning support classes. Still going to uh, make sure that we keep it at about a 12 hour a year, one hour a month time commitment um, so that anyone in the community we feel like part of the sweet spot of our program is that the busiest person in any community can still do this. So here's what you see locally. We need 92 mentors in Bedford County. Um, if you have not mentored with us before, um, or even if you have and you'd like to mentor with us again next year, you see the website here, tnachieves.org slash mentors. The deadline to apply this year is December 3rd. Uh, if you've never mentored with us before, you'll do the new mentor application. If you've mentored with us before, you'll do the returning one. Just ask you a couple quick questions to update your contact information. And then you'll do a one-hour training, which you'll get more information about. But really want to make sure that we find those 92 mentors in Bedford County to support students in a year that we know um, continues to throw some curveballs and challenges. Other things you can do to help us out. So just mentioned, if you'd like to be a mentor, we could use your help. Um, other things we could use your help with is connecting with your community. Um, I know Ivan has had me down to the local civic club a few times, um, and we have presented the information there. Would love to continue to do those types of things. So your Rotaries, your Kiwanis, you have chamber meetings. Um, if you are on some type of listserv that um, you create a newsletter, or if you just wanna put all of your friends on an email, um, we can give you content to do that. We've already got newsletter material that's written up. We can send it to you. You can blast it out to your friends, family. Um, we are always more than willing to come down and we can do this kind of local Bedford County spin on Tennessee Promise. We can do the big picture spin on Tennessee Promise. We're always happy to come. And if you have any of those opportunities, you see you can just email mentors at tnachieves.org there um, and we will provide you with whatever you need or we'll find a date and time to come. And then finally, the Tennessee Promise application for students is open, it's live. Um, like I mentioned, we're getting a really good high percentage of students to apply, but it never hurts to remind them um, that that application is open and available to them uh, until November 1st. So that is all of the presentation that I have for you today, um, but I am certainly happy to um, take your questions and any comments, feedback, anything that you have. Um, Want to make sure we get that answered for you before we leave here today. Anything? Hey, Thomas. Yes. Oh, okay. I shut off my phone, so hopefully I won't, I won't uh, go dead. Uh, <clears throat> there's a number that I can get off of, uh, from the chamber that tells or represents an, a number of students that go, that say they are going to uh, community college, something four year, even service after graduation. But after that, we don't really know who that is or if mm -hmm. they did that or if some more jumped on. Mm -hmm. um, is there a tracking for students forever, I guess is what I'm saying? 
Yes. So um, those numbers that we gave you earlier, your college going rate, those are from the state. Um, but we are able to track students uh, that apply for Tennessee Promise that go to college anywhere in the country. So there's something called the NCAA Clearing Clearinghouse um, that uh, most of the colleges in the country participate in. It's not 100%, but most of them do report back. So we know, for example, Linda, a couple of years ago, we had a student that applied for Tennessee Promise that went to Harvard. So, you know, we were probably not only playing B or C, but probably playing, you know, W for that student, and that's okay. Um, but we are able to track them to most universities and colleges across the country. So we know if they're, obviously we know if they're using Tennessee Promise because we're supporting them, but we do know if they're enrolling somewhere else. The one number that, the one population of students we can't track in Clearinghouse um, is military. We don't have anything to track that because we know that's a really good option for a lot of students, um, but we don't have any kind of system to, to track that. Uh, second question, why do you, do you have any inside or insight as to why our FAFSA numbers are not better than they are? I don't. Um, you know, it's a weird year. Everything is a little bit lower. I don't know um, what percentage of your students were in school all every day last year versus what percentage of them were at home. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it in a lot of our communities. Um, I think our, our school counselors are really good about, we send them updates, especially as the FAFSA filing deadline approaches, um, which students have and have not done it. And I think they go, they pull those students out of class and they say, hey, I see Lexi is one of our complete coaches on this. They say, hey, Lexi, you know, you didn't file your FAFSA and they'll pull you into the office and they'll sit down and help file your FAFSA. And a lot of them weren't able to do that this past year. Um, I think that's why we saw a statewide dip, but in terms of from community right. to community, I'm not exactly sure. Could, could you, if our superintendent wanted to pursue that, could you give her by high school, which, what the numbers were? Yes. Um, so we send okay. something out to all the directors of school, superintendents, principals, and school counselors that let them know um, not only their numbers, but which students have and have not. Okay, good. Uh, my last question, and then Ivan, you can have it. Um, I've got a, a lady that was left off of our little advisory board uh, through the mayor's office to someone. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do I get her added to that advisory board? You can just email it to me or Tyler, either one of us. Okay. And so my next question, and I promise this will be the last one. Mm -hmm. Ivan, would you be willing to be on our advisory board? Uh, yes, we have to. Okay. Would you, have you got the mayor's uh, email address or? Uh, uh, I'm sure I've got it someplace. If, okay. If not, my email is just Linda Yockey, Y-O-C-K-E-Y -E at gmail.com and send me your email and a contact phone number and that's all I need. Will do. Awesome. Thank you. Thank I you, mean, Thomas. You're probably on that at one point, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, yes, probably. I think, I think so. And and uh, what happened, Thomas, it got rolled over from one mayor to another mayor. Sure. And it so um, it, it just kind of got convoluted. So we kind of had to start all over again. So that's great, Ivan. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and Laura's very involved with our program, too. So she's she's always up to date on our progress. OK. Any other questions I can answer before we get out of here? Hi, it's Jeremy here. I have a quick question on how much of the community service hours went virtual this year? So we had a, a really large percentage of them um, went, vir went virtual this past year. Um, I want to say something like over 100,000 hours um, were submitted to us virtually this year. So we provided those opportunities. You know, we heard uh, last spring that Students were having trouble completing those hours and finding places to go. So we provided some opportunities um, and they have been really, really popular. We are continuing to offer those um, until we feel like it's totally in the clear and, and students everywhere can, can get back out. So um, those are still an option for students for this next deadline. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried to encourage my students, well, I just, it gave them their options where they could do either, but they're 
did definitely seem to be a trend towards the virtual. I, it's may to be the most interesting. It sounded like there's watching yet another webinar, but I mean, you gotta, gotta, gotta do something. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I'll give credit to our mentors. Um, we were sitting here at last, I guess, March or April thinking, um, you know, we were feeling a little helpless as students were telling us that they didn't know how to complete hours. And um, we sent out the call to our mentors and said, would anyone be willing to record a webinar, be on a panel? So each one is more than just one person uh, speaking, but, and share your career experience and career advice and what students can do if they're interested in those. And um, I think for people that were also, other people that were feeling a little helpless, it gave them something really tangible to do. And they answered the call and we recorded about 25 of those. Um, and the feedback has been extremely positive on those. So hopefully students are finding them to be beneficial and helpful. Great. And as I recall from way back when I was in college, the FAFSA, even if you're like not expect to never be eligible for it, it seems like that was a foundational part of any kind of financial aid package. And so like those who don't file the FAFSA, they're in there pretty well, like, you know, whatever their income is, is there, they're probably not going to, you know, any kind of college and they're certain, and they probably aren't uh, eligible for anything from the college or financial aid. It seems like whatever it was, you had to go through FAFSA first before the college financial aid would even consider what they had. Yeah, I think for the vast majority of scholarships out there now, the FAFSA is a it's kind of a prerequisite um, to get prom Tennessee Promise. It certainly is for the state's hope scholarship. It is, um, you know, <clears throat> if you are a wealthy family and you are going to maybe an elite school, um, maybe there's not as much need to do something like that. But I, I think even most of those schools still encourage you to do so to, to be eligible for most institutional aid. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks for being here. Anyone else? All right, well, thanks again for joining us today. We really appreciate your support. This is um, really important to us that we're being uh, open, honest, and transparent with you about our successes and our challenges. And we appreciate your feedback and your questions. And anytime you have questions, you think of something after this, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And uh, hopefully we'll be back in your communities soon. Um, we're ready to get back out on the road and, and be in front of students again.